Hi everyone, I'm just getting ready for the day today. I've already done my skincare, but I thought, you know what, I'll just show you what makeup I'm putting on today. I don't share a ton of makeup videos on my channel, but I do get a lot of questions asking, what lipstick are you wearing, what eyeshadow are you wearing? And so I thought it's probably time to do a little updated makeup routine of the makeup products that I wear in most of my recent uh, videos here on YouTube. All right, so let me just pull my hair back, get it out of my face. It drives me nuts when I see people doing their skincare and makeup videos and their hair is like this they're like next I'm gonna apply my sunscreen and their hair is like all in their face <laughs> in their mouth so that is one thing I will always always pull my hair back before I do my skincare or my makeup routine <laughs> if you don't already know and you haven't seen my other videos my background is completely different it's yellowish it kind of looks looks dingy because I am on a cruise ship and since I like to be cheap I, I still like to travel a lot but I like to be really cheap when I travel we get the cheapest room possible we can find hence the reason it's kind of dull and dark yellow there's no balcony here there's no windows there's not even a little porthole we get the darkest smallest room that we can get on the cruise ship usually midship not the very front or not the very back so if it does look kind of a little yellowish and you know kind of funky in the background i apologize we're on a cruise ship for like the next month and a half so you know on these sea days where there's not a whole whole lot to do I like to hang out and do makeup skincare and hang out with you guys. My skincare routine was super easy today. I just did like a three step routine. I cleansed my face, I used a serum, and then I put on my dermatology sunscreen. I didn't even use a moisturizer because this is, you know, fairly moisturizing for me, but of course you could use a moisturizer first if you would like. I've also already put a nice little thin layer of my Clear City Lips on my lips so that they can start getting hydrated and moisturized and those little plumping ingredients can start helping to plump up those little fine lines and kind of the deflated look that my lips are starting to get the older I'm getting. So I always add that into my skincare routine as well. For my foundation step, I'm going to use this product by Aven. This is their Tinted Mineral Compact Sunscreen. This is an all mineral SPF 50 sunscreen, but it has a beautiful, almost full coverage tint to it. Now, if you are one of those who saw one of my previous videos where I shared how incredible this product is and you got a little bit out of shape saying no this is a foundation it's not a sunscreen I use it for my foundation step but on the label it does not say this is a foundation this is a sunscreen but it's a high coverage sunscreen because it has the iron oxides in it so in one of my previous videos I've mentioned I didn't put on foundation today and I said well the typical foundation that one would think I just used a tinted sunscreen a couple people I have no idea why, but a couple people got their feathers ruffled and thought I was being deceptive and dishonest because they swear this is a foundation. Call it whatever you want. If you wanna call it a foundation, you wanna call it a sunscreen, if you wanna call it a bird, call it whatever you want. But this is the tinted sunscreen I'm going to use on my skin today that will pretty much replace my standard foundation. <laughs> it's funny to me when I, you know, have to be so specific about that because, you know, I don't know, some people just, they get really frustrated about the silliest things, but you know, whatever, it is what it is. So this is a nicely pigmented sunscreen product that, now, like I said, I did use my dermatology sunscreen first because I like to really make sure I get my sunscreen everywhere and not miss a spot. But honestly, you could probably get away with just using this. I'm sorry, let me just show you what it looks like, what I'm using. It's, um, it's a cream to powder product. So it feels like a, a cream when you rub it and then when you put it on your skin, and this color matches my skin perfectly, but when you rub it on uh, your skin, once it dries down, it's kind of like a, a powder-like uh, finish, kind of a natural. They say on here it's more of a matte finish, but for my skin, I don't find it to be like that flat matte look. I still have a nice glow when I use this, but the coverage on this, actually let me uh, zoom in so you can see. So the coverage on this is quite impressive. Let me show you on this side of my face because my melasma is darkening up a little bit here. I think you can see it really well because my melasma is so dark today and I have a little pimple there. But look how dark my melasma has gotten this week. It's not because I'm not protecting my skin from the sun, it's the heat. When we go to the tropics, my melasma, it just gets so dark on my skin and then my melasma will get really dark around here. Look at the difference in this side of my face. To this side of my face 
I mean, it is what it is. That's unfortunately what melasma will do. And then what I typically like to do, so I'll use one side of the sponge to apply this product and then what I like to do is I will turn the sponge over on the clean side it doesn't look clean because it's just stained from this tinted sunscreen but it is this side is clean I already washed it but I'll take the side that I didn't use to apply the product and then I'll just kind of you know use it like a blending sponge and press it all over my face just to make sure it got down into the little nooks and crannies there's no creasing it's not settling into any of my fine lines and wrinkles so I just kind of press it in so like I said you could get away with using this as your only sunscreen but since I do like to kind of press some of it off I want to make sure I'm fully protected especially since I have all of this melasma that will get really dark so I do like to use a separate sunscreen first and also this is what I put in my purse or pocket or whatever so when I'm out and about midday you know and we have to keep touching up our sunscreen every couple hours it's kind of difficult to bring my big bottle of my dermatology sunscreen with me so I just put this in my purse and this is what I use to touch it up over top of my makeup throughout the day so it's almost like you're refreshing your foundation and everything just blends really pretty and you're getting that SPF 50 protection over top of your makeup so if you have a hard time reapplying your sunscreen try something like this and I think you're really gonna enjoy it for my under eyes I'm just gonna do a teeny bit of color correction just because I have you know this hollowed out area here I don't want to get fillers so you know I just leave it the way it is and I just try to add a little color correction I'm using this peachy shade what this is though this is also another sunscreen this is by Jane Iredale this is her enlightened plus it's an under eye concealer and it's an SPF 30 all mineral sunscreen but it has this really pretty it's it's almost identical to the color science one as far as what it does um, but it has this nice little cooling tip I don't really use that too much but it comes out in just this kind of light very light peachy shade and I take the teeniest amount. Now I had shared this when I bought this, I guess around Black Friday, and I was wanting to compare it to my, where's my color science? I have it here. Oh, you know, I threw it in my purse. But I was wanting to compare it to my color science, the three in one total eye that I love. I do love this one, but if I had to choose between both of them, I would choose my color science three in one total eye only because the color science is more hydrating, more like watery-ish feeling. This is a thicker, uh, more like a what you would use if you're trying to color correct so I and also I feel like I can use more of the color science and blend it in and it just really adds that hydration and moisture to my eyes this doesn't add any hydration this is just more like to me it's just more like a straight-up concealer but it's it's really nice so I love them both but for two different reasons but what's great is this one is a concealer an all mineral concealer as well so you know especially if you have sensitive eyes and you have issues using concealers this might be something that you would uh, really like plus you're getting that added sunscreen bonus so I just put a little bit of it on not even much to really make a difference but I, I don't want my face to look cakey I'm just trying to do like kind of thin layers of product so the next thing I'm gonna do I'm gonna put on a little bit of my Kosas concealer Now this one has more of I'd say like a yellowy undertone but this is brightening and this is super hydrating and moisturizing for my under eyes so since I use that kind of peachy color corrector, I really enjoy using the Kosas over top of it. And it, this is a beautiful concealer. It doesn't crease very much. It doesn't crack. It just kind of stays skin-like. Every now and then I do have to like take my finger and lightly press over it to make sure it's not settling into any of my, you know, under eye wrinkles. But this is actually a really nice concealer, but I never really enjoyed it on its own until I started using an, a peachy color corrector first. Now you don't have to go, you don't have to use any of these products by the way, I'm just sharing what I like to use so don't feel like you have to rush out and buy these products. But using a peach color corrector first before I use this Kosas product, it's made me really enjoy using this again. I'm gonna go ahead now and do my eye primer so that can just kind of set and do its thing. And then I'm also gonna go ahead and do my lips. Usually I wait till the very end to do my lips but I'll share with you why I wanted do them now and if I forget to mention you know and hold the product really close to the camera if I forget to mention all of that I always link every single product I'm sharing in a video just look below the video click on show more or that little drop down arrow to the right side right underneath the video that's gonna open a whole description box that I take the time to write out every single product that I'm sharing in the video I have shopping links if I have any discount codes I will share that below as well so if you're ever wondering and you're thinking oh my gosh she didn't zoom in close enough 
on this exact product, just look in the description box below and I will have everything organized and listed down below to make it really easy on you. Now I'm gonna do my lips because I'm using a lip tint that I kinda want to set in before I finish the rest of my makeup. This is one I've been using it like a month now. It's by Etude, it's their fixing tint. I got the shade Dusty Beige. Now it's beautiful on its own, but what I like to do is just let it sit for a couple minutes and then I'll blot it completely off and my lips will stay stained. That really pretty kind of your lips but better shade, they'll just be stained that shade I mean, for six, eight hours, it is so, so pretty. This way I don't have to hassle with touching up my lipstick. I can just slap a lip gloss over top of it and this stuff won't budge. I love, love, love this. So I'm just gonna do a quick little bit of lip liner first. This is my Estee Lauder Double Wear. This is in the shade Brick. It doesn't really match what I'm gonna use, but since I blend it all, it, it'll, it'll match just fine. And then I will put the uh, lip tint over top. And then I'm just gonna put a little bit of my City Lips Clear uh, Lip Plumper over top. For my bronzer, I'm gonna use my uh, City Bronzer from Maybelline. I'm just gonna use this kind of like fluffy brush. I think this is one of the Angie Hot and Flashy brushes from BK Beauty. And then I just kind of bronze up my face a little bit. For my blush, I'm gonna use this one. It's one of my favorites from the brand Gabriel Cosmetics. This is supposed to be like a clean formula. I've used this for many, many years. This is a new one I just purchased. And this is one of the BK Beauty brushes. This is one of my absolute favorite. Uh, her newest collection of the BK Beauty brushes, the face brushes, I love, love, love them. So, you know, I'm on a cruise, so I only brought, since I can't bring a ton of stuff, I only brought some of my absolute favorites. But these two from her newest collection, these are, to me, the best face makeup brushes I have ever, ever used in my entire life. Actually, wait, one more. This one also. This is from her travel collection, though. The This is the 101. I'll just link these down below. I think she gave me a discount code to use. It's, I think, 10% off, so I'll link it down below. It's not an affiliate. I didn't want to accept any commission or anything from this because she has such a great uh, program, the Kindness Campaign, so any commission I would get, I just want her to use it towards that. These three right here, to me, they're probably the best brushes ever, ever made in the entire world <laughs> for my face. I love them so, so much. I'll just pat a little bit of the blush off on my hand just so it's not gonna be too, too bright, and then I'll just put a little of it on, or probably a lot. <laughs> I love blush, so I always put a ton of uh, blush and then I look in the mirror before I step out and I'm like, woo, I look like a clown, but <laughs> I just <laughs> blend a little bit of it off afterwards. So now is when, since uh, my concealer's really had a chance to set, I'll just lightly take my fingers. I don't use setting powder under my eyes. I just don't like it because then I don't want it to get all dry and crusty. I mean, you can if that's what works great for you, but I just don't really like to do that. So I'll just lightly press it because, you know, I always touch up not just my face throughout the day with sunscreen, but I also touch up my under eyes throughout the day with sunscreen every two to three hours. And I touch up my under eyes with my Color Science 3-in-1 Total Eye. So if it does start to look creasy or cracky or whatever, it's really not a big deal for me because even though I do, I do put a full face of makeup on, I kind of do such a thin layer. So if I'm re-blending stuff over my face throughout the day, it'll still look good because I'm not adding thick layers of product. I'm just kind of blending everything in as I, you know, keep reapplying that sunscreen. For my eyeshadow, this is what I've been wearing in almost every single video, I'd say for the past month or so. It's one of my absolute favorites. I have already shared it in another video, but this is by the brand Peri Para. I'm gonna link it down below. So all I do is I just put this one pretty much all over the eye and I start to build up a crease with this because as you can see, you can't see where my crease is. You know, I have this extra skin, uh, you know, this little hooded area. It's not bad, but I do have, you know, this hood does hang over a little bit. So I do like to kind of make a crease. Now there is a product that will help firm up your eyelids and I did not bring it with me. If I stop using it after about a month, I start to get that loose skin again. It's like exercise. If we stop exercising, we're gonna get flabby. <laughs> Same thing with skincare. If we do not use our skincare every day, you know, it's not gonna work anymore and we're gonna start to see saggy eyelids and droopiness. But I have another video. I will link it down below if you want to know this magical product and I'm not exaggerating. It is fantastic. I actually didn't discover it. One of you guys recommended it to me to use on my eyelids and I thought, all right, I'll give it a go. But I noticed it makes a huge difference when I do my makeup when I'm using this product. I think it took maybe two months before I started seeing my eyelids uh, get nice and tight because when I don't use it after I've stopped for a month or two, when I do my eyeshadow, I feel the skin moving too much and it's kind of, you know, just, you can see, it's just looser skin. And when I use this other product on my eyelids, it's 
it's fabulous. It makes a huge difference. So anyways, I'm going to put this kind of taupey light brown shade and just make a crease with the fluffy brush. This is one of my other absolute favorites. This is from the brand Refer. And then I will just probably uh, deepen up the outer corner with this darkest shade and I'll just put a little smidge of this shimmer in the center. Really, really easy to create this eye look. Before I finish my eyes, I want to do my eyebrows. Usually I like to do my eyebrows first, but if I forget, no biggie. I'm just kind of cleaning off any of, you know, any moisturizer, makeup, anything like that that I got in my eyebrows so my product will stick. I have on a, a tank top underneath this. Let me just move it out of the way <laughs> so you can't see it. All right, so for my brows, I'm going to use this product. This is from, I think, Blink. I will link it down below. I don't think a lot of people are trying to see necessarily my technique because I'm not a makeup artist, but I know people are asking, hey, what shade is that or what color are you using? So, you know, if you're wanting me to zoom in super duper close and go really slow to show you my technique, I'm happy to do that in another video, even though a makeup artist would probably be like, uh, yeah, that's not how you're supposed to do it. But I think it's no secret I'm not a makeup artist. I just do the best I can do. I mean, don't we all? And you know, just do whatever works best for us. For me, like makeup is not that serious. It's just fun. But of course I do enjoy makeup. So I just kind of brush this into my brows because I want my brows not to look super bushy and fake. I just kind of want them to be filled in a little bit. Some days I will only use this because this just really helps, you know, darken them up and shape them a little bit better. My brows are thin still because back in the day, plucking your brows really thin was like the end thing. And now it's not really that popular <laughs> to have those super thin 90s brows. And then I will just quickly take my brow product. This is one I really, I like this a lot from Huda Beauty or Huda Beauty. This is the teeniest, the thinnest little brow tip on it. Thinner than any one I've ever tried. And I saw some reviews where people were complaining saying, I hate it, it breaks off so easily. It never breaks off on me because I use the lightest touch with this. But all I do, I have another video, I'm gonna link it down below, of how I draw this kind of like, sort of an X type technique. And it makes doing your brows so, so simple. Then I just kind of fill in where it's missing. But what I do is I just kind of draw this little, kind of an imaginary X and it will just, help reshape them so I do one line here and then a really light line kind of going this way and then I just connect this line to here this line to here and this line to here and just fill in anywhere that looks like a hair is missing and then I take the other side and lightly brush through it even if you have the thinnest brows or no brows, doing this technique that I share in this other video, and I'll do an updated video on it since I know it's like an older video, a year or two years old, but it is the easiest technique. It's not my technique. I learned it from watching you know, a younger gal on YouTube, but I will link that other video if you want the easiest brow tutorial ever. And then if I find it to be like a little messy, that's never a problem. I just take a little concealer. I'm just wiping a little of this Kosas concealer and I take this little teeny makeup brush. I have no idea where I got this. I think I got this at Yes Style. If I, if I can find it, I'll link it down below, but it's just a super thin, I think it's meant for the lips, but I use it, I use it on my eyes. And if I feel like it just needs a little bit better shaping or maybe I used the spoolie a little too much and it got, you know, just looks sloppy, I will just wipe off a lot of the product and then I just kind of clean up those edges right around it. Plus it'll kind of highlight it and make your brows, you know, look even more lifted. That's why I like to do my brows before I do my eyeshadow so that if I mess up a little bit here, it won't mess up my eyeshadow. And then I just kind of 
blend it with my finger. I don't always use an eyeliner, but I got this Ilia eyeliner in I think a kit that a derm store they sent me like a few different things to try out and typically I don't use liquid eyeliner anymore but I really like this I don't make a thick line since I do have kind of hooded eyes and my eyelid space is very very thin I just apply it just kind of just to darken up uh, the edge of my eyelashes but without even you know covering up any of my eyelid space And then I don't do, you know, like a big crazy wing, but I do pretend I have my mascara on and where like an eyelash would kind of come out here, I do just kind of draw a little, little dot where the, you know, pretending it's like an eyelash. So a little, whoop, just a little swoop like that. And then I fill it in. So I don't know, I guess it's like a little baby wing, I guess <laughs> is what it is. And then for my mascara today, I'm going to use my absolute favorite, my City Beauty Beyond Mascara. This isn't just makeup. it's like skincare and makeup for my lashes. So I do like to use this quite often because when I test out a bunch of other mascaras, you know, they're great, they're makeup for my lashes, but I don't think they're as healthy for my lashes as something like this. So this is like skincare in a mascara and it keeps my lashes so healthy. My lashes don't fall out when I use this and it's a gorgeous mascara. It makes my lashes look super duper long, thick, nice and black, and it doesn't budge all day for me. But I love that this is a good for my lashes type of mascara. I'm gonna spray my face with a little bit of this Milani setting spray. I think this is better than a lot of the high end. Probably it is one of the best makeup setting sprays out there for all skin types if you want that pretty glow. It will just kind of hydrate my skin and you know make it look a little bit glowy. And then of course the makeup will last a little bit longer throughout the day. I have to fan it away from my nose <laughs> before I breathe in because I don't want to breathe it in. <laughs> so while this makeup spray is kind of setting my makeup and doing its thing, I want my eyes to look a little more lifted. I just want to kind of clean up any area that maybe I did it kind of sloppy. So I'll just take whatever concealer. I'm going to use this Kosas one because I like that it's nice and creamy and it's brightening. And I'm going to use the same little brush. And I don't put a ton of product on it. I'm just putting it on my hand and then just kind of wiping off the product and I will just kind of clean up where I made little mistakes with the eyeshadow and I go about right here and lift. I don't leave it like that. I'm going to blend it, but that's why I like to do it when this Milani setting spray is a little damp on my face because it just kind of helps everything to blend a little bit better. See how that just kind of lifted up my eye a little bit and it just cleaned up any, see how I have it like a little uneven here. This just kind of helps to lift it. I'm going to zoom in so that you can see the finished look and you know I might have to blend it a little bit better I'll get out my little zoom in mirror and look but this is pretty much what I do every single day if you want to see another video where I share some of my makeup favorites I will make sure I pop that video up here so you can just click on it now if you'd like to check it out thanks so much for watching and I will see you in the next video